of every iPod I've owned, the iPod 4th Gen was probably my favorite. To me, it introduced a rear-facing camera, a thin stainless steel design, and a retina display. This is William from Wink Tech, and in this video, I'll be talking about the iPod 4 and how it holds up in 2018. I recently talked about my experience with the first iPod Touch. I decided to make a follow-up video on my next iPod, which happens to be the 4th generation. Between the first iPod Touch and the 4th, the design remained mostly the same with the only difference being the addition of a front and rear camera, speakers, as well as a thinner design. The design of the iPod was actually quite nice until you accumulate scuffs and scratches on the very shiny stainless steel back. It was also very thin and light, which is important for a music player, although the iPod was capable of much more. Unlike the first generation, this iPod features speakers, although very bad ones, and it also has a volume rocker and retina display. Speaking of that display, it is much more pleasing to the eyes thanks to the higher resolution. Colors aren't great, but it isn't nearly as unbearable as the iPod 1. The resolution of the display is 960 by 640, which comes to 326 pixels per inch. The screen size is also very tiny at 3.5 inches. To put that into perspective, the iPhone 10 has a 5.8 inch display and has a resolution of 2436 by 1125, hence the name Super Retina. The specs are of course very dated and nearly unusable in 2018, or is it? The iPod 4 ran an Apple A4 chip, which sounds like a very low number compared to the latest and greatest A11 chipset. However, iOS actually handles it quite well along with the 256 megabytes of RAM. For storage options, the iPod 4 came in 8GB, 32GB, and 64GB variants. However, it was later released with the 16GB, which is the model I have. A white model was also later released, but personally I don't think white suited the iPod 4 design well. One of the features introduced on the iPod 4 was the rear-facing camera, which is unsurprisingly not very good, but hey, it was there. The camera is 0.7 megapixels and takes 720p quality photos and videos up to 30 frames per second. The front camera is even worse at 0.3 megapixels and VGA quality photos and videos. Here, I'll let you judge the camera quality for yourself. Right now you're looking at video recorded on the iPod 4th generation. As you can see, it is absolute garbage. But at least I had a camera, which is something that none of the other iPods before it had. So, there it is. Now comes my favorite part of the iPod 4, which is software. It runs up to iOS 6.1.6. .6. Most apps will no longer be supported, but the ones that are don't run too bad. iOS 6 is widely regarded as one of the fastest and most reliable versions of iOS ever. In fact, it runs much smoother than my iPod 5, which was destroyed by the iOS 9 update. iOS 6 was also the last version of iOS carrying the schemorphic design from the Steve Jobs era. The iPod 4th generation was important because once again it delivered nearly the whole iPhone experience in a package that was cheaper, kid friendly, and still portable. It was like having a phone without, you know, the cell phone features. When the iPod 4 came out I was in grade 3, but by the time I was in grade 4, the iPod 4 was the thing every kid had. I was lucky enough that I was able to be a part of that. For me, the iPod 4 was also my second Apple product which furthered my love for the brand. The iPod 4th Gen was a, just a cool thing to own back in the day. Whether you used it for listening to your favorite tunes, playing games, taking pictures, or actual productive things, the iPod 4 brought joy to children, teens, and adults alike. Even today, the iPod 4 brings nostalgia with iOS 6 and its classic looking stainless steel design, which actually sort of made a comeback in the iPhone 10. If you're looking for an old Apple product to add to your collection, or even just a cooler way of listening to music, I suggest picking up an iPod 4 used from ePay or Kijiji. Otherwise, the iPod 4 is much too slow and unsupported to use it for anything too serious. That's it for now. I hope you enjoyed this look back at one of my favorite Apple products. Please let me know in the comments below if you own an iPod 4 at some point, and also let me know if you enjoyed these reviews of old tech by liking this video. Consider subscribing if you enjoy this content. Anyway, this has been William from Wink Tech, and I'll see you 
in the next video.